All right, we are going to work on section 3.3 notes, the second half of them, that back page, where we have two more examples of graphing quadratics, uh, focusing on the factored form. Now notice this one's not a factored form, it's standard form, but I want you to change it to factored form. Okay, so we're going to change this to factored form. We need to get the factored form. So we need a factor, right? A is 1, so there's no A to factor out. So we're going to take A times C, 1 times 3, that's my A times C. Um, we're going to look for two factors of 3 that have a sum or that add up to 4, that B value. 1 and 3 will do. If you're in my honors class and you remember how to factor without the box, you can just go right to the factored form. Uh, if you are not in my honors class or you don't know how to factor it, at this point, you draw the box. First term gets the first square, last term gets the last square. Middle term, that 4x gets split into 1x and 3x. We then do the GCF for the top row, bottom row of the table, first column of the table, second column of the table. And we've got our factored form. Double check it, x times x is x squared x times 1 is x, x times 3 is 3x, 1 times 3 is 3, and x squared plus x plus 3x does add up to my quadratic. So our factored form is going to be x plus 1 times x plus 3. Now at this point, we're just going to fill in the rest of the information to a graph. Direction of opening, it's up because a is 1. And I can see either from the factored form or from the standard form. Either way, A is 1, because there's a little 1 sitting in front there. There's a little 1 sitting in front there, okay? It's opening up. The vertex, um, since it's in standard form, I'm just going to go ahead and use the negative B over 2A. Or I could do the average of the x-intercepts. I think we'll just go back to this, because it's easy. We're comfortable with it. Um, all right, so negative b over 2a, you know what, rewind. I think I want to look at those x-intercepts. Where will the x-intercepts happen? y equals 0 when x plus 1 times x plus 3 equals 0. That's going to happen when x is negative 1 or when x is negative 3. Subtract a 3 from both sides. What do you get? x equals negative 3. So my x-intercepts, negative 1 comma 0, negative 3 comma 0, right? We can get the x-intercepts the zeros of the function from that factor form. Now remember, big ideas is probably going to just ask you to list them as the x values, the negative 1 and the negative 3. Okay? But we now put those on the graph, and notice the axis of symmetry has to be halfway in between. Now this is going to be a piece of cake, because what x value is going to be halfway between negative 1 and negative 3? Be negative 2, right? There's two units between them. Split it in half. You get one unit on each side of your axis of symmetry. Okay? But let me show you that we would get the same thing if we used the average. All right? So we've got several options here. The average of negative 1 and negative 3, the halfway is going to be negative 4 divided by 2, which is negative 2, right? So see, we got the same thing, negative 2. Or you can use the negative b over 2a, right? Because negative b over 2a is also going to equal negative 2. So we got lots of options, right? But we don't have the y coordinate of the vertex yet, so we still have to work on that a little bit. So best way is to just plug in this x value. x value is negative 2, right? 
I need the y that goes with it. So we can either plug it into the standard form or I can plug it into the factored form. It doesn't matter which one. We'll get the same thing. I kind of like the factored form. So I'm going to plug it in there. Keeps the numbers smaller. Negative 2 plus 1 is negative 1. Negative 2 plus 3 is 1. That's negative 1. I'm going to see my vertex at negative 2, negative 1. Okay, negative 2, negative 1. There's my vertex. There he is. And he's opening up from there, right? Okay, my vertex is a minimum point because it opens upward. Minimum point. Axis of symmetry. X equals negative 2. X intercepts, we've already got those. It's those two points. And the y-intercept, oh, look, if we plug in x equals 0, we get y equals 3. We've got our intercept right here at 0, 3. We're going to have, let's see, two units on the other side. So 1, 2, negative 4, positive 3. And our next points are going to be off the graph. How do we know? We go up 1, right 1. We go up 3, right 1. Next time, we'd actually go up 5 and right 1. It's the pattern with quadratics that have a equals 1. Um, you can test it out. You plug in x equals 1, you get 1 squared is 1, plus 4 is 5, 5 plus 3 is 8. I go 5 up from there. Yep, okay. So the next points will be off the graph. So we're just going to draw half of the parabola here, other half over here. And then don't forget, we still have to have our domain and range. Domain is all real numbers. I'm going to use this notation this time, I think. Negative infinity, comma infinity. I don't remember what I used last time. And the range is going to be all y values greater than or equal to negative 1. Okay? So there's that. I shouldn't really need to circle those. There's nothing else in those spaces. Also, remember the interval notation for this would be bracket negative 1, meaning the smallest y value is negative 1. Smallest range value is negative 1 and it goes forever into those larger values, okay? All right, last example. f of x equals negative 2x squared plus 12x minus 16. We must have the factored form. So we're going to factor. Yay, we get some factoring practice. Okay, so first thing to do, you got to factor out the a. a is negative 2. You're going to factor it out. Even if it's not a GCF, you still have to factor it out. So factor out the a. Dividing by negative 2, dividing by negative 2. Double check it, make sure it works. Negative 2x squared plus 12x minus 16. Yep, multiply it back in. Uh, we do a times c. We're going to now factor the stuff inside the parentheses. Ignore the negative 2 that's out front. We need to factor what's inside the parentheses. So we need two factors of 8 that will add up to or have a sum of negative 6. That would be negative 2 and negative 4. From here, if you remember how it works, you can just factor it without doing any more work. If you need to do the box, then we do the box. First term gets the first square, last term gets the last square. Remember, we're only working with the stuff inside the parentheses. So the x squared and the 8, and then the negative 6x gets split into two pieces, a negative 2x and a negative 4x. We'll have an x and a negative 4. We'll have an x and a negative 2, right? x times x is x squared. x times negative 2 is negative 2x. x times negative 4 is negative 4x. And negative 2 times negative 4 is positive 8. Yep, x squared minus 6x plus 8. Okay, so factored form. Negative 2 times x minus 2 times x minus 4. Direction of opening, it's going to be down because a is negative. Right? A is negative 2. B is negative 2. It's the same A value in your factored form and your standard form. Vertex, uh, you can either do H equals negative B over 2A, or at this point, you have to find the, the zeros, the x-intercepts. Anyway, you could find them by setting each factor equal to 0. Right? 
One of them is going to happen when x is 2. One of them is going to happen when x is 4. We can put those on the graph and do the halfway, right? No, whichever way you want to do it. Or you do h equals negative b over 2a. Either way, it's all the good. But be careful where you're getting those values from. If you're using negative b over 2a, you have to go with the standard form. Okay? So b is 12 and a is negative 2. So be careful where you're pulling the numbers from. We've got negative 12 divided by negative 4, which is positive 3. So vertex 3 something. What's the y value? Well, we've got to plug it in somewhere doesn't really matter which one we plug it in. You can plug it into the standard, you can plug it into the factored. It doesn't matter. Maybe I want to plug it into the factored this time. We'll have negative 2 times 1 times negative 1. Negative 2 times 1 is negative 2 times negative 1 is positive 2. So we get 3 comma 2 for our vertex. Vertex is right here. Okay, there's our vertex. Vertex is going to be a maximum point because that parabola is going to open downward. So we have a maximum point at the vertex. Okay, axis of symmetry, x equals 3, vertical line through the vertex. Let's draw it. Vertical line through the vertex is the line x equals 3. Okay, there's our axis of symmetry. The zeros the x-intercepts. They're going to happen when your function is equal to 0. That will happen when any of the factors is 0. Right? From this one we get x equals 2. From this one we're going to get x equals 4. Okay? So x equals 2 x equals 4. In other words, our intercepts, 2 comma 0, 4 comma 0, right? Again, remember that big ideas is probably going to ask you just for the x values. So you would type into one of the blanks that they give you, because they would ask for two x intercepts. One of them is the 2, one of them is the 4. All right. Uh, let's put those on the graph. 2 and 4. Notice how they're evenly spaced across that axis of symmetry. They have to be because of the symmetry. Y-intercept, if we plug in 0 for x, we get negative 16 for the y. It's the c-value in our very original function. Not the 8, because there's a negative 2 out in front. 0, negative 16. Domain is going to be all real numbers. I'm going to use that notation this time. Capital R with the extra line. There's our domain. And then for our range, I'm going to finish the graph and then identify the range. Um, I'm going to look and see what happens when x is 1. When x is 1, um, you can either plug it into the standard form or you can plug it into the factored form. It won't matter. Okay, I'm going to plug it into the standard this time. So negative 2 times 1 squared plus 12 times 1 minus 16. Okay, 12 times 1, that's not looking like a times very much, is it? So we've got y equals 1 squared is 1 times negative 2 is negative 2. So we've got negative 2 plus 12, which is 10. And then 10 take away 16 is going to be negative 6. So we can plot the point 1, negative 6. We can use the symmetry to count to the line of, of symmetry. 1, 2, 1, 2, and go across the same distance. We draw the graph, there's half of it, the other half, oops, making that I'm not quite rounded enough, oh my, that was a struggle, still a struggle, there we go, okay, so the range, everything less than or equal to, y is less than or equal to 2. Here's our range. Think about what it would be in interval notation. It would be 
negative infinity because we don't have a smallest y value. It just goes down forever to negative infinity. So smallest y value, there isn't one. Largest y value is a 2. Interval notation, you have to go from the smallest on the left. The left side has the smallest and the right side has the largest. And that is our 